today's video intends to cover the wonderfully, magnificently complicated character movement component. Everyone's probably used it. Most people have played like Fortnite and Gears of War and have played games that use it to move your character around. Uh, but a lot of people don't really know how it works under the hood. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to figure out how it works by reading the source code. Um, and instead of just dealing with like conceptual stuff, we're going to look at how the code works. In order to decipher how character movement component works, I'm going to be a hacker. I'm going to hack my game. I'm going to try and run faster than I should be allowed. And we're going to show you how character movement component will stop me from being a hacker. I'm also going to try hack and run through a wall, uh, like glitch through the wall. And character movement component is again going to stop me from doing that because it's very smart and very complicated. <laughs> Okay, so allow me to demonstrate my first hack. I've rigged it up so that when I press the one key on my keyboard, it will move my player around way faster than I should be allowed to. In a single player game, this hack would actually work. But in a networked game, we're not allowed cheating, right? You have to disallow that. So I'm going to press the one key. Well, you can see I'm moving around, right? You ready? I'll press the one key. I'm going to activate my hack. All right, I've activated my hack. Watch me try run. Check that out. So you can see how for a moment like I was running faster, but then I'm snapping back. It's almost like something's stopping me from running faster than I should be allowed to. And the answer is it's the server that's doing that. It's correcting me. It's saying, hang on a sec, you're not supposed to be able to run that fast. So even though my computer thinks my player can run really fast, the server hasn't been affected. And so it's correcting me. So first of all, it's going to stop me from speed hacking, right? That's pretty cool. What about glitching through walls? Let's try that hack out. Okay, so here's this big cone. And as you can see, I cannot walk through the cone. Like nothing happens, right? So when I press the two key on my keyboard, it's going to turn off the collision for the cone. So technically I should be able to just run through the cone. But again, I'm only changing it on my own computer. The server doesn't think the cone is walk throughable. Uh, is that a word? Probably not. Anyways, let me turn the hack on. I'm gonna press two on my keyboard. And watch me run at the cone. You ready? Ah, see that? I can walk through the cone, but then the server tries to do what I just did, and the server's like, hang on, man. The cone has collision. You can't go through that. And so the server plops me back in the right spot. It's stopping me from cheating. So this is one of the main reasons that the character movement component is so goddamn complicated, is the fact that it disallows cheating. It trusts only the server's location. The reason this is so hard is because when I press the W key to move forward, we can't wait for the server to process that. It needs to let you move forward straight away, otherwise it would feel really laggy. If I press W and the server in San Francisco has to reply back and say, hey man, you can move forward, it's going to take like half a second before I see my character move forward. So it lets me move straight away, but then it snaps me back if I'm trying to cheat by speed hacking or walking through something I shouldn't. Okay, so where the hell do we even start? There's so much code here, where's the best place to start? The answer is probably the start new physics function. This is the function that will actually move the character through the world. That's like the most rudimentary thing to learn, right? How is it actually moving our character? When I'm in the air, why do I fall? When I'm on something, why does it make me walk around? How is that all managed? So the answer is in start new physics, it will check what your movement mode is. And depending on that, it will call one of uh, a bunch of functions. So for example, if I'm flying, because there's a flying movement mode that you can use, um, it will calculate the velocity that I need to fly in. Um, and then it will move my player using this function here. So this, this function actually moves the player. But there's a bunch of different fizz functions, fizz flying, fizz falling, fizz walking. And all of them will move your player, but just in a different way. And some of them are really, really complicated. Like fizz falling, which is the physics for when your character's falling or like jumping, is hundreds of lines of code long. So if you're really interested, you can go and look at these different fizz functions to find out how each movement mode works. But I'm not super concerned with these right now. But just know that that's how your character actually moves. So now let's get into when I press W on my keyboard, how, do, what, how does that result in me walking? Let's start there because that's a good starting point. 
So in the character movement component, there's this function called tick component. It gets called every single frame. So if your game's running at 60 FPS, this function is getting called 60 times per second. The first thing it's gonna do is grab my input vector. Most people will hook it up so when you press W, it gives you a forward input vector. When you press S backwards, A is left, D is right. And then if you press like combinations, you can move diagonally. Everyone knows how you walk around in the game, right? So this is what we're doing here. We're grabbing the vector that describes which direction we need to move in. I'm gonna, again, skip some of the stuff that's not super relevant because I'm trying to give you guys the bigger picture. So the next thing we do is we come down here and we check what role your character has. So let's talk about roles for a little bit because they're really important to understand how this works. A simulator proxy is someone else's character that you're looking at run around. It is simulated. You're not looking at the real character running around. The real character running around is on the server. But on your game, on your monitor, you're seeing a simulation of his character running around. So other people's characters are called simulated proxies. Your character is an autonomous proxy. It's a little bit different. It's still a simulation, but you have autonomy over it. You can control it yourself. When I press the W key, I move forward instantly. I still can't cheat, but when I press W, I expect my character to move forward instantly, and it will. Authority is your character and everyone else's character on the server. It is the authoritative version of the game. So really, we're all connecting to the server, which is running the real game, and we're just simulating what the game is uh, on our own computer. So we're going to check if your character is not someone else. We're going to check if it's either your character or the server's version of your character. So we come through here, and we're going to check if it's you. So are you a client that's connecting to a server or not? So we're storing that in this variable. And here we're doing something called a correction, which I'll come to later because we don't really run into correcting until a bit later. But a correction is when I tried to run through that cone before and it snapped me back. That's what a correction is. But we won't uh, go into corrections just yet. So um, the first thing we do is we check um, whether you're like jumping or not. We check the direction that you need to accelerate in, some things like that. And then this next bit is the important part. If we're the server or a single player game, we call this function. This function will call start new physics and will move you around. The problem is we're a client, so we're not allowed to just move around. We have to move, record how we moved, and then send it to the server so the server can make sure that we're not cheating. And if the server thinks we're cheating, it'll rubber band us back. It'll issue a correction, right? So if we're a client, we call this version instead, replicate move to server. It will call perform movement, it will move us. Because when I press W, I expect to move straight away, but it's also gonna record how we moved and store that information, because it's really important that we store that. Okay, so replicate move to server is called by you. Because you're not the server, you need to replicate your move and then send it off to the server. So I'm gonna talk about how replicate move to server works. But before I do that, we need to cover a really important thing called save move character. This is how we actually save a move. When I move through the world, I need to record how I moved and saved move is how that happens. So here's saved move and it stores a bunch of information about where I was when I started moving and then where I was when I ended moving, right? So it stores a bunch of stuff about that or acceleration, things like that. So replicate move to server is gonna come down and we'll skip like we'll skip a few things that aren't super relevant i think here's the best place to start we're going to make a new saved move to store our movement in okay we then set the move up by using set move four which is going to initialize the move it's telling the move hey i'm here and i'm about to move so you need to record it so we can also combine moves together to save network bandwidth because if we're sending less moves uh it's just like less network traffic we need to send so it can make your game a little bit less laggy so that's what that's doing. We'll just ignore that for now, but it, it, that's what it's doing. It's combining moves together. Um, but here's the important part. We call perform movement. That's the same thing the server is doing. It's moving us straight away. But then after we do it, we call post update. That tells the saved move, hey, we're done moving. So you need to record where I am now. So it's recorded where we were, and now it's gonna record where we are now. It then stores this move in an array of saved moves and when the server acknowledges the move and goes, yep, that's okay, or nope, you're cheating, I'm going to correct you, then it will be removed from this list of saved moves. But for now, we're going to keep track of it, and we're going to store it in this array of saved moves. The next really important thing that happens 
is this function call here, call server move. Basically what it does is it takes the move that we just did and it's gonna send it to the server. So now the server can check it out, make sure it's okay, give the thumbs up or thumbs down and rubber band us back, correct us. So there are a few different server move functions, but the main one that gets called is this one down here called server move. We're basically gonna tell the server, hey, we're moving. This is our rotation. Um, this is the timestamp at which we moved. This is our acceleration. It has these flags which are storing whether we were jumping, crouching, stuff like that. So we tell the server about how we moved and the server is about to replay that move and make sure it was all good. It does so by calling the server move RPC on our character owner, which in turn just comes back and calls uh, character movement server move implementation, which is right here. Okay, so now we're on the server. On our side, we've moved, and now that it's time for the server to check out our move and make sure it actually worked. So it's gonna, first of all, do some uh, timestamp verification. Um, that's to do with like speed hacking and stuff. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna unpack our view, our acceleration, and it's gonna use a function called move autonomous to replay the move that we did. Because move autonomous is basically, I'll show you. It's basically just calling perform movement, but it allows us to uh, set acceleration up and other things before we perform movement. So we use move autonomous to basically recreate the move that the client just did. After move autonomous, the server has moved your client in the same way that the client said he moved. Now it's time for the server to check if there was an issue because we might want to give the thumbs down and say, hey, you're hacking, right? So it's going to do that in this function, server move handle client error. This is where the error checking actually goes down. So um, the main part that's interesting here is server check client error. It's basically checking whether um, there was an error uh, that needs to be adjusted. So if we need to correct the client, we'll set all this stuff up. We'll say, hey, client, you need to go to this new location. You need to have this new velocity. You need to have this new rotation. I'm about to uh, correct you. So it sets this pending adjustment thing here. Adjustment basically just means correction. It's just the same thing, different words. Um, and it sets all this up and then it will send this back to the client. Or if everything went fine and the server is giving the thumbs up, it'll come down here to this else part and it will say uh, pending adjustment B acknowledge good move equals true. So basically it's saying, hey, your move is absolutely fine. No issues here. And then something interesting happens nothing <laughs> so how does the server tell the client this stuff it sets these values but it never tells the client about them so how does the client rubber band back it turns out it does set these values it just sets them um after the fact it sets them in unit driver server replicate activist here you go this is where shit gets really complicated. So I apologize, the next like 30 seconds are gonna be super complicated. But basically inside of server replicate actors, we're still on the server, we've set up all the adjustment stuff, um, but we're gonna grab the player controller and call scene client adjustment. This will look for the network prediction interface, which character movement component implements. As you can see right there, it implements this and then it will call send client adjustment. So now it's gonna send the adjustment off to the client. So it's a little bit roundabout and a little bit confusing, but basically it will then call <laughs> this function here. Okay, so it's set up all the stuff. It, at this point, the server's either given the thumbs up or it's given the thumbs down. So now it needs to tell the client, was it a thumbs up, was it a thumbs down? So if it was a thumbs up, if acknowledge good move is true, we call client acknowledge good move. This is an RPC that yells back to the client and it's gonna tell the client that everything was okay. Otherwise, um, usually this function here gets called. There are a few different ones, but this is the main one that gets called client adjust position. Um, this is a correction. This is telling the client, hey, you moved wrong. You need to go back to where you were. So we'll start with everything went okay. Client acknowledge good move calls character owner client acknowledge but good move. That eventually gets routed through to this, client acknowledge good move implementation. At this point, the server uh, got the thumbs up, so it calls acknowledge move, which just removes the move from our list of saved moves. Everything went fine, you can remove it. We're ready to do our next move and then have that either thumbs up or thumbs down. 
More interesting though is what happens if there's a thumbs down. Well, let's have a look at that one. Okay, so that's what happens if everything goes good and the server gives the thumbs up. So what happens if the server gives the thumbs down and we need to correct the player? So if we need to correct the player, client adjust position gets called. Client adjust position that gets routed through the character and this is a client RPC and now we're on the client. So the client has been told by the server, you need to go to this new location, you need to have this new velocity, you need to be at this new base, you need to be standing on this new base, um, and you need to have this movement mode. So now the client has received notification of this stuff, and it's basically going to set its location to the, the location sent through by the server, uh, which happens here. It's going to set our velocity to whatever the server told us to. It's going to set our movement mode to the server's one. We're basically just, the server's saying, hey, thumbs down, go to this place with th this stuff. And the client's just going to go, okay, sure. I'll go, I'll correct myself to where you said. The last thing of note that it does is it sets client data B update position to true. And then when the component ticks again on the next time, it'll come down here and it will check this flag, be update position. It will then call client update position, and that is the correction. The correction now happens. Uh, the client goes through and repeats any moves in its saved moves that have not yet been acknowledged, um, and at this point, the client is now corrected. It's, it's snapped back, and so that's kind of the correction part of it as well. All right, so that's pretty much how character movement component works. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is so far we've just covered when I press WASD, how does it move my character around? Um, the one thing we haven't covered is how do other people's characters get moved around? People that aren't me, how are they simulated? Um, and the answer is that if we come down, this is what we we're looking at at the start of the video, this replicate move to server stuff. Um, but if you come down here, if role equals simulated proxy, we call this function called simulated tick. This will roughly approximate how other people are moving and make them run around, but it's not exact. It's not as smart as our own movement. It's not as precise, um, but it'll like roughly make things look good. And, you know, so when other people run through the game, they look reasonably normal and they approximate pretty well. So that's simulated tech. And you can go and look at that if you want to look at how um, other people's characters are simulated. If by some miracle you actually found me entertaining, consider buying my course. Um, I show you guys how to make an open world survival game with like weapons and vehicles and pickups and all sorts of shit like that. Um, I think you'll really like it. So check that out. It's on my Patreon and the link will be in the description below. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> to the servers one. <laughs>